Hey y'all and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian and Tucker Carlson is absolutely flabbergasted when this illegal immigrant who has worked for Goldman Sachs and epitomizes the American dream admits to being an illegal immigrant and then refuses to take any responsibility. So you uh, applied for a job and were accepted at Goldman Sachs and ascended uh, in the ranks but you were here illegally. That suggest that you used an illegal social security number, someone else's, a stolen social security number. Whose was it? I did. I used a fake social security number that didn't belong to anyone. It was a completely made up number. Um, I absolutely wish that I didn't have to do that. I wish that there had been a pathway for me to become uh, a permanent resident and eventually a citizen. You know, I came here when I was 11 years old, and so I absolutely wish that there had been another way. Um, I, I guess it sounds to me like, and congratulations on your success in this country, I think you'd Thank be a you. little more grateful for the opportunities the country offered you. It sounds like you're blaming the country. And I also found your characterization, frankly, of the president's proposed border wall as, quote, a symbol of hate as not an indication of gratitude. It suggests that you don't think America has a right to protect its borders. And that seems a very odd attitude for someone mm. who's benefited so much from your adopted country. No, uh, not at all. I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't think that makes me ungrateful. I think that makes me a citizen of the country who also gets to have a voice. And my voice might be different than your voice. My dear, when you are an illegal immigrant in the United States, you are by definition, or at least in my opinion, not protected by the U.S. Constitution. There is an argument to be made you're outside of the law, and therefore Congress can write laws to say that you can't show up and talk about uh, the issues on shows like this. I see no, I, I see no real reason why she has a right to her voice. She should, but you're talking about the wrong thing, and she's going to continue to do that through the rest of this segment. But we both get to voice our opinion. But I'm not, I'm not, of and course, so I'm, and opinion, I'm not challenging your, that... your right to ha to say what you think. And I would, I would defend it, uh, literally. However, I yeah. don't understand well, my, my... why a country's desire to protect its border is this is an expression of hate. Well, what, what does that mean? I, my, I, think, I think my, no, I think that my, the point that I'm trying to make is that the wall is not the best way to protect our borders. Listen, I live here. I want this country to be safe. My children are going to grow up in America as American citizens born here. And so I absolutely want our country to be safe. But building a wall that is going to cost, by the way, billions of dollars of American taxpayers, my tax dollars are going to go I'm sorry. You, to build I'm not, a wall. I, you know what? I don't have any patience for that argument because I don't think it's... To, uh, hold on. That isn't going I'm to... Sorry. It That's isn't going to protect argument. us. Okay. How is the wall going so to So you're saying it's too expensive. You're saying the wall is too expensive, but you know that's not actually what you said. You said it's an expression of hate, and I just want to get to the bottom of that. Why is it hateful to want to build a wall? A lot of Americans do, the majority in some surveys. Why is that related to hate? The biggest issue with the left is not that they want to reform things, but they see things in a black and white of oppressor versus oppressed, with the oppressor on one side and the oppressed on the other. And thus, a wall is a literal dividing line between oppressor and oppressed. So it triggers them on a fundamental level, and it makes them say really stupid things. Hey, y'all, as we know, you don't put all your eggs into one basket, right? So that's why I'm partnering over with my friends at Colonial Metals Group, who will help diversify your portfolio. And what they'll do is they'll set up for you a self-directed IRA account. You'll have direct access to your assets. You'll be able to see what all's going on. And it doesn't matter what the stock market does or what often happens, what the government does, your assets will be protected. So let the team of experts over at Colonial Metals Group help secure your account and your family's future today. There's a link in the description below. Oh, and by the way, if you don't like that, there's a 1-800 number you can call. And most importantly though, is the kicker. They'll throw in a safe and possibly up to $10,000 in U.S. silver to help you get things started. Now, back to regularly scheduled programming. It is, it is a hateful symbol. It is a symbol of, of hate against immigrants. It is a, him, a symbol of hate against uh, Mexican immigrants, which, you know, the president, uh, the, the, Mr. Trump, uh, ran his campaign on. So I do still view the But why the is it a symbol of hate? Well, hold on. Why is it? A, I just want to get to the bottom of this, because you're throwing around language that has an effect on people's attitudes, and it's pretty heavy duty, because it presumes 
motives that you can't know. You don't know that people who support the wall hate Mexican immigrants. A lot of people coming across their border are not from Mexico, as you know. They're Central Americans. Is it legitimate, is it morally legitimate for an American to say, I want control of who comes into my country, and we don't have that, and so a wall will reestablish that control. For you to denounce that as hate and seems would, a little much. And I would absolutely, and I would absolutely welcome a conversation about how do we create a system by which people can come here legally to, that will benefit Americans, that will increase tax revenue, that will increase economic activity. So we should have that conversation. We well, we're have having that conversation, conversation now, and you're not answering with respect. You're not answering my question. System. You're not answering the key question here. Well. That's because she can't, Tucker. She can't fundamentally answer those questions because she's not looking to. Because again, the fundamental problem with leftists is that they see things as oppressor versus oppressed. And again, a wall, a literal wall, is a dividing line between that. And even though I can make a very easy argument from the leftist perspective that the cartels are oppressors, all right? By definition, they are. They are sex traffickers. They bring in human beings, force them to pay exorbitant fees in order to, uh, you know, not be mutilated by them later on because they keep better tabs on their people than our own border security and our own Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security. It's, it's mind boggling that the cartels do a better job keeping track of people inside the United States so they can make money off of them than we do in, a, in tracking illegal immigrants. And we, we've got known gotaways. We know where these people are. So why don't we do anything about this? Well, for starters, Congress is in gridlock. And it's almost always in gridlock. And ultimately what that means is that we can't get anything done. So even when there's an occasional okay-ish bill that doesn't go far enough, no one's going to vote for it because it either goes against the uh, idiosyncrasies of the left, or it doesn't do enough for practicality on the right. That's why nothing is happening at the border. It's why Mayorkas is doing such a terrible job as well. He's misallocating resources from border agents who need to be going after the cartels to taking people to court dates. He is misusing funds, and Congress is the organization that can put a stop to that and get everything back on the right track, or at least having a president that'll appoint someone that'll actually use resources correctly. That's also necessary. So we have to win the presidency and win the Congress, win the Senate, and then have a very good bill. Do y'all know how difficult that is? So again, I'm, I'm not getting off course. I'm trying to explain what the problem is. Why leftists don't seem to understand the monstrosity that they're supporting because they see everything between oppressor and oppressed. They would see this lady, despite the fact that she works for Goldman Sachs, probably makes six, maybe even seven figures a year, is here illegally. There is a solution to that. And I don't think it's deportation. I don't think that's fair, because she seems like she wants to be here. I'm gonna sing uh, uh, Julia Arce, I think it's pronounced, Ar Ar Julissa, Julissa Arce, I think that's how you pronounce it. She seems like she wants to be here. I've known illegal immigrants that want to be here. And I've known ones that deserve to be deported. It's a fine line, but I think we can do it properly. I believe in our ability to fix these problems. But we can't do it when one side of the aisle sees things in this dichotomy of oppressor versus oppressed. Because history isn't like that, and reality isn't like that. And that's why reality doesn't work too well under leftists. Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed that segment here on Politibrawl. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, let us know how you would fix the border crisis in the comments below. I am open to suggestions because we need them. And until next time, y'all have a good one.